Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight I want to go over just a quick little review here of this book that I've been working on, just finished. And it is called The Arbatel of Magic. It's of the magic of the ancients. It's from the first English... Mike and I are having an argument. First English edition from 1655. Um, this current edition was around 2018, I believe. Uh, it's a very small little tract. It's only 44 pages. It's a bay. Um, and when I first was reading about it, it's supposed to be kind of the moral guide book for the aspiring magician or the aspiring occultist. And it, the more I dug through this book, and like I said, it was a short <laughs> book, there's a lot of good information in there. And they tie a fair amount, and I will not deny, they will tie, a, they do tie a fair amount back into Christianity as they knew it in that time period. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's up to, up to you to decide. What I thought was interesting, though, is as you go through, it's broken up into four or five. Um, it's seven septenaries of a forums. So these are things that you, there's seven groups basically, and it's broken into these sets of instructions. Uh, there's a little introduction with that, and it's like, in the name of the creator of all things, both visible and invisible, whom reveals his mysteries out of his treasury to them that call upon him and fatherly and mercifully bestow those secrets upon us without measure. It goes on a little bit more. And then you start breaking down what this actually implies. And when we talk about the concept of divine magic or theurgy, um, it's really talking about how we tie ourselves or connect ourselves into the heart, the mind of the creative force. Then we bind, kind of we get bound with that. We bring that energy down and then we can manifest things in the world. This book, when I first was looking it up, they've... <laughs> some reviews online not on Amazon or stuff but you read about stuff and it's like oh it's a scary book it's so evil it's really not though uh, like this one on the back it says the Arbatel of magic is one of a number of early grimoires focusing primarily on white magic and the philosophical side of the occult uh, it's well known despite its relatively short length it's broken into a series of aphorisms which aphorisms <laughs> which contain various spiritual knowledge so this entire book is based on the concept of if you wish to practice magic of any form, primarily white magic, but I'm talking like high magic, Wicca, whatever other branch you want to pick out of all that, this is kind of the guidebook that you want to show you the moral and ethical way to exist in that world. Um, Tying into that, it also implies, it doesn't say it in this one, I've read other grimoires where it's actually very, <laughs> very vocal about this, it implies to never denounce your birth religion. And the reason for that is, they don't like, is that this one just kind of implies that other ones are pretty loud about it. If you make an agreement with a spiritual um, effect behind it, meaning a baptism, a confirmation, something that you are consciously aware of, not a baby one, but like a grown-up one. If you've made that agreement, that is binding spiritually. And so when we have those things that bind us, we have to go through the process of not denying that because to deny or to denounce that is becoming an oath breaker. Back in the old days, loose term would be classified as a warlock to break a spiritual oath. That was a negative thing. That would be automatic. You work black magic. You don't ever touch the light because you have broken a vow. So, and like I said, it's implied in this one. It's written out very clearly in others. The reason I bring it up is this is telling you how to live a prosperous and beneficial life as an occultist or a white magician, a Wiccan, however you want to look at it. And it's not to denounce the other parts. It's to say... It taught you a ground level experience. It, the people in it may not have been good, but your connection to God, Source Divine, that doesn't really change. It's just where you go. <laughs> so that's the reason I bring that up. And that's what they talk about in here. It says, like, um, 
the aphorism three live to thyself and thy muses avoid the friendship of the multitude be thou covetous of time beneficial to all men use thy gifts be vigilant in thy calling and let the word of god never depart from thy mouth this is talking about don't don't hang out with people just because well they are popular no one cares <laughs> but it also saying to be careful with your time don't just frivolously throw it away don't you know we all are have those issues where we doom scroll at night but it's things to hold yourself in a higher standard and when it says let the word of god never depart from your mouth it's really saying speak truth speak with integrity and be upfront and honest in everything that you do and it talks about be good to admissions in other words admonitions so when you are <laughs> brought up on you know for whatever thing be upfront with your situation don't him and haw don't lie about it be you know polite be professional but also don't put up with any garbage <laughs> um, and they talk in here they use a little bit of biblical terms like uh, this one love thy thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy strength all thy self and the Lord will keep thee in the apple of his eye and deliver thee from evil it's not specifically saying that you have to follow a Christian doctrine it's saying don't deny the fact that this exists we all have a divine spark within us and to deny that connection to God's source divine is to really say that we're denying that aspect of ourselves as well how well does that work out for you <laughs> um, but then you go into your next set of uh, forums and it's interesting because they're all it's I mean it says it in the, th the title but it's set up in sets of seven so it's seven sets of seven so this book itself, if you go by um, numerology, is a spiritually positive work because of that. Um, let's see what else we got here. The number of four is Pythagorean, the first quadrate. Therefore, let's place the foundation of all wisdom after the wisdom of God revealed in the Holy Scriptures. This is going into how you actually gain knowledge and mastery over nature by using the set of four. Um, yeah. Pythagoras talks about you know, the concept of the four elements, and there's other ones that talk about it as well. So we go through all of this. He does reference some, the author does reference some biblical t uh, things in here, like talks about in the Acts of the Apostles, the Spirit said unto Peter after, the, after one of his visions. But And this is the part where a lot of modern day, especially Christian mystics, are going to be a little bit pushed back. That's fine. It's not meant to be an insult. It's more of just bringing forward a different view of things. Thou, thy soul lives forever through him that hath created thee. Call there forth upon the Lord thy God, and in him shalt thou serve. And it's not saying that you can't call upon deity. It's saying your soul exists forever because this is what supports all life. 100% agree with that. Like I said, they tie a lot of Christianity back into it, but it's not in a negative sense. It's actually trying to be supportive of, look, you can have this really cool life. You can still be in this other alternative religion, and you don't have to deny anything. You can deny the people. <laughs> you can deny that building, but don't deny or denounce your connection. Um, I've known of over my years of wandering through this particular branch of things I've ran into people who have straight up denounced everything to do with their birth religion they've denounced um, their baptisms or their confirmations and all that and their life doesn't go so well and it's not a matter of well they're just it's because they're not doing the right thing it's because they broke an oath a very 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 sacred oath this book is trying to say you can still have that belief you can still have that connection but there's another way you can practice within that. And that's, to me, the important part of the Arabatel is it's a separation from the mainstream, I guess, if you will. Uh, they goes and He goes into, in the third septenary, talks about there's different governments of spirits. And this, I thought, was kind of cool. It's re one of the reasons I've been kind of interested in this book. He actually references back to the Olympic spirits, not just... The standard like oh the goetic or the um, higher key of Solomon or any of that it goes into the Olympic spirits so we're talking like Zeus and all that but their names are a little bit different because we've got where'd they go um, Aratron, Belthor, 
Faleg, Ak, Hagith, Ophiel, Fool, and these are all loosely interpreted Olympic titles. And each one under them has a mighty militia in the firmament. So these are um, Olympic spirits that control a set of basically higher energy, not quite angelic, but higher energy. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Servants. <laughs> then they goes through the different uh, princes of the seven governments that are s simply called. And it goes through the different seals. And we're talking old school seals. Like these are not anything... Uh, newer they're not done in circles they're very very basic and it goes through what each one is they talk about phaleg they talk about ak they talk about hagith and how many legions that are underneath each of these spirits what kind of benefit they can have to the aspiring witch or wizard um, so those are kind of and that's the reason it's kind of a grimoire the one thing with this one that i will say straight up you need to have some foundation of ritual mysticism or magic to really be able to dig into this. You can read it, anyone can read it, and you can apply certain precepts to your personal practice without any issues. But when we start getting into dealing with the signs, the symbols, the calling of the spiritual uh, intelligences, you should have some of the basics down <laughs> because you don't just willy-nilly go calling on these forces. Um, and there's reasons for that. There's lots of movies, there's lots of books, some truthful, some not, but for the most part, you don't call on certain energies or entities unless you have a really good understanding. Possession is a very real thing. That's the reason I say it. Anyway, <laughs> so we get into, like this one, it's Aphorism 20. All things are possible to them that believe them and are willing to receive them, but to the incredulous and unwilling, all things are impossible basically saying if you're going to put yourself into a situation where you're going to want to manifest you want to use the law of attraction you want to fill in the blank with whatever it is you're trying to build you have to believe that you have to be open to the receiving of it otherwise to the incredulous and unwilling all things are impossible you have to put everything into this that's the reason a lot of um and I've heard this term a lot, and I didn't think I'd ever use it, but a lot of fluffy bunny people, I'm going to join this because it gives me all this freedom, and I can do whatever I want, and look at all these cool things. That That's not how any of this works. <laughs> you can really make a magical and powerful life using these various tools. Some I've talked about. There's others that I'll get to later. These are important things to work with because it helps us understand that this a is only temporary but b we have the ability to create and change our life according to our divine will that is not our physical will and when you get into this group these groups that are more fluffy bunny airy fairy type stuff they don't have the grounding and the foundation work to be able to launch into the greatness that they they think they want because when you start getting into a lot of that you'll realize that some of those things that you thought were so cool really aren't and it's not a knock on those things. It's just it's not as fascinating or fun as you thought it would be in the first place. But that's where books like the Arabatel are, to me, a very good tool because it helps us ground and center before we send ourselves out into the <laughs> world of chaos. Um, when we get into the fourth uh, septenary, they start talking about the different numbers, the different secrets associated with each number. Um, we get into the fifth, and it starts to talk into, uh, where are we at? There we are. Um, Aphorism 29. As our study of magic proceeds in order from general rules pr pr premised, let us now come to our particular ex explication, I hate some of these words, thereof. Spirits are either divine ministers of the world and the church and the members thereof, the heavenly court, or so to speak, or they are the subservient creatures in corporeal things, partially for the salvation of the soul and body, partly for destruction. And that's when you start getting into your uh, more elemental neutral energies. Not so much they're not high, they're not low, they're just kind of in the middle. Um, and then we get into there's nothing done good or evil without a certain determination of order and governance. He that seeks after good end, let him follow it. He that desires evil, pursue that also. 
so if you're going to put yourself into a situation where you're going to want to do any of this, and I'm saying this more as a cautionary tale, make sure that your heart is in it. This is not something just to be like, well, that sounds fun. I'm going to go join. No. And to me, personally here, that's where a lot of our modern day groups have kind of fallen away is to let anyone join. And if you look back to the old days, the secrecy was there for a reason. The rituals of initiation were there for a reason. And books like this are like, you can't just jump into this stuff and expect it to work. You might have some minor success, but what's the cost? See, that's the balancing part of it is when you do things for morals and ethics and working within a balance, you actually can build a stronger foundation, allowing you to exceed far beyond what you originally thought. And so when we get into the sixth septenary, um, it starts talking a little bit more about the stars. It starts talking about uh, all lots have their place decently, order, reason, and means. These are the three which do easily render all learning as well as the visible and invisible creatures. In other words, you have to have order <laughs> to exist. Reason and means. Be able to reason through a project and to look at the overall picture is how this interprets to me. Without this, you really can't create anything. That's where you have to stay grounded when you start working through this and not get distracted by, ooh, look at the sh shiny sparkly things. Those are fun, don't get me wrong, but you have to have the foundation because those sparkly things could be leading you over a cliff if you're not careful. And again, this is not something that I say as to be fearful, I say it to be pay attention. A lot of the modern metaphysical and occult communities like to talk about things as fun and they're exciting and they're all this. They can be and they are in a lot of ways, but there's a seriousness to it that you have to understand. And that's where, like I said, I'm really super impressed with this book. Um, like I said, I just finished it the other day and the foundational work that they go through in this, um, is just fascinating it is a way to bring yourself into alignment with your higher ability your higher self and help you see a better path forward as you proceed down the path of the spiritual and what's interesting is outside of the grimoire section of this where they're talking about dealing with the spirits directly this is just an overall good work to have for someone who is wanting to go on a more spiritual journey wanting to study, practice, uh, even manifestation work. It's, again, there's parts of it that are very Christian. The person who wrote it was a monk. Um, so you want to take some of that and set it aside if you're not quite comfortable with it. But overall, it's a good book to give you a kind of a guide to a proper moral and ethical way, more focused on divine or white or light magic or mysticism. It's a way to help you direct your attention to the right things, stay grounded, and learn how to work within the balance of nature. There's always a balance, and when the balance is upheaved, there's a cost. And that's what this book, I feel personally, helps us kind of skip some of the, uh, or not skip, but bypass work within the means of, the averages of, so that we don't have the balance slapping us in the face every time we do something. So. With that, I will let you guys go. Um, I'll link the book in the description. You can check it out. Like I said, it's a good reference material, especially if you are just getting started or you are interested in expanding beyond the base level of things. Again, proceed with caution when you start stepping into this world because when you start taking full accountability and full responsibility for your own existence and your own life, there's no one really to blame but yourself if stuff goes weird. So um, <laughs> I will let you guys go. Have a great rest of your evening and week, and I will see you in the next video. Hit that subscribe button, drop a like, you know, all those comment YouTube online thingies, and I will see you guys and gals later.